The AMA Moving Medicine podcast highlights innovation and emerging issues that impact physicians and patients today. Hello, this is the American Medical Association's Moving Medicine video and podcast. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Leanne Chrisman Kawam an assistant professor of social medicine and director of the Transformative Care Continuum Program at Ohio University Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Dr. Chris McQuam will share advice for medical students on their rank order list in preparation for the upcoming Maine residency match. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Chrisman, thanks so much for joining us. This is now the second match that will happen uh, that reflects the impact of the pandemic. Is there anything that you learned or saw from this kind of uh, this past year that's going to help inform your guidance for medical students in the coming year? Yeah, I think that um, we all experienced this using a video technology and trying to look at the right spot in the camera and those sorts of things to really share your true self. That's going to be really important in terms of how people perceive you. And so you want to like know that if you didn't have a good interview, you may want to call someone or send an email or have that follow up. Clear communication is so much harder virtually. And so you may want to follow up with a written or email, um, well written communication so that people feel like they're connected to you. That's interesting. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a skill all of us are learning at the same time. Do you have any kind of key tips uh, for folks uh, in regard to that kind of interviews? Yeah, I think that um, in particular, um, util utilizing the video portion, doing some practice over Zoom or Teams meetings or however you can get on, even FaceTime with your family members, with people that you feel comfortable um, trying to have that normal communication, that normal interaction, it can be tough. And so trying to be your normal self and, you know, do your normal um, facial expressions and hand gestures, that's really important stuff and really hard to do. So yeah, practice as much as you can. That's the advice that I give folks when they're talking about how to, how to get better on, uh, there's just no substitute for the kind of practice that you get from, from doing it. Um, well, now hopefully, you know, we're moving out of this kind of pandemic match uh, environment, you know, from what you've seen, do you think uh, this kind of upcoming match period this year is going to be any more difficult or easier? And do you have any kind of specific guidance uh, that you're kind of tailoring for the situation that we're in now? Yeah, I think that last year was in particularly difficult. So many of our students had limited clinical exposure some of their rotations, their core rotations were shortened. Many of them had zero opportunity to do away rotations. So getting that rotation at the location that you wanna be is one of those key elements that can really help you know, am I a fit here? Are they a fit with me? And those are actually some of the most important things around residency. You're gonna do three to five of the most intense years of your life. And you wanna know that you have support systems, people that you work with, colleagues and attendings who are your teachers that you wanna work with um, and that wanna work with you. None of us are perfect. None of us is a perfect match, but knowing that you have someone that you can grow with is the key to having a good residency match. Well, let's get into that because the topic here that we're going to go toward is this idea of uh, the rank order list specifically. Um, these lists need to be submitted uh, by March 2nd, which is coming up really fast. And so, uh, you know, this very stressful period as students are trying to figure out how, how to rank programs in the first place. So, you know, when offering uh, ranking advice, some people say, follow your heart. Is that, you know, something that you subscribe to or do you have a different kind of philosophy that you impart? It's interesting. I have a dual philosophy. So I'm all about a pro con list. Um, so what I really like is that you list those factors from the most important to the least important for every single program. And then you look at those factors so that you're really comparing apples to apples 
not apples to oranges. And then after you've ranked them based on, you know, logic, that then you go with heart because there's somewhere in your intuitive brain that picks up things that even the logic doesn't. Things that were those intangibles, the way how people treated you on the day. The, I remember a place that I went for a residency interview where I walked through the hospital and no one looked at me the whole day. People looked down and they were gruff. And, and I thought, I can't work there, right? <laughs> and then there was another place where I walked through the hospital and literally, I think almost to a person, to a fault, people smiled at me and said, hello, how are you? Or good day or, you know, and I thought, wow, big difference. So those little intangibles, your brain is picking up on those even if they don't end up on your pro con list. So at the very end, use a little bit of that heart to get what your brain and your heart know that might not come out in your Excel spreadsheet. And I know one of those factors that, that people always deal with when they're making decisions like this and they're doing their pro con list is this idea of uh, you know the pressure that comes from dealing with should I go with a, you know, a bigger brand name or something that's, you know, quote, more competitive? How, how do you, how do you advise folks on the proper strategy for factoring in things like that? Yeah. You want to be realistic and honest with yourself about your metrics. You know, don't be going beyond and out of reach. It's okay to shoot for the moon. And those big brand names aren't always what they appear to be. Um, one of the most important things is that you feel comfortable because you don't really learn and don't work well where you don't feel comfortable. Um, there's something about the learning brain that needs those base Maslow hierarchy things met around safety and belonging. And so believe it or not, to get self-actualization, we actually need people with whom we can work. And I actually really think that that's valuable and important. Um, trust that more than any brand name. That might be that the brand name, the big, you know, shiny school with the white towers is the place for you. But if it's not, you will struggle there. And so you really want to feel that fit. Fit is, I, I can't even begin to tell you how important to your eventual success. Yeah, and that's kind of hard to judge. I know people that know me and they, they think about that hierarchy, know that it, uh, food is very important to me, but uh, I think fit is probably that that real bridge toward you know what you call self actualization, which is you know uh, kind of bridging the the basics to a place you you're going to want to spend five years. Um, you you know you're at an osteopathic medical school, and um, osteopathic students they they can face some extra challenges in the selection process uh, what are some of those barriers and and how do you advise them to to work with that some of it can be bias against the profession that feeling that osteopaths don't have the same training which isn't true they have the same training mm -hmm. plus um, i for disclosure am an allopath working an md working at an osteopathic school so i i know this in fact that we are training students with the same skills plus osteopathic manipulative therapies. Medicine doesn't stand still, and at the AMA, neither do we. AMA members are physicians like you who are shaping the future of medicine. Become a member today and join the movement. Visit ama-assn.org slash movingmedicine. Um, so there's bias. And then I think the other piece is the accreditation exam. I hope that someday we have a dual accreditation exam with the osteopathic medicine as an extra section. Um, that would make a lot of sense to me. But right now, our osteopathic students to be competitive, especially in competitive specialties, really need to do the USMLE, um, which puts an extra burden of cost travel potentially, and also stress because timing is everything, right? It's an extra time. It's a different written test. So it's a different thing to study for. 
and they must pass COMLEX because COMLEX is for their accreditation, their uh, certification. So I think um, that is an additional burden. It really is. The other thing is, is that um, even within non-competitive specialties, there are going to be competitive places. And so some of those places will require USMLE. And in most cases, I recommend that students that are going into, you know, internal medicine and psych and um, family medicine may not need to take that additional burden of the test. But if they really want to go to some place that's very competitive, it may be required. So, you know, seeking advice from other graduates of those programs, potentially other osteopathic graduates could be really helpful. And Any those- kind of uh, specifics on the, the rank process for those students, the ranking process? Yeah, that's a tough one too, um, because they may rank osteopathic and allopathic programs. Um, you really don't want to not rank the places you want to go. Um, and I have seen a few students that get uh, rigged out if they don't put um, places that rank them high, high enough on their list. Mm-hmm. So you want to like keep them in your top tier places that you think might rank you as long as they're places you really want to go. You never want a single program on your list that isn't someplace you'd like to go. I think that's really important because I've also seen years in which we have students who are heartbroken and now are bound by the match. And, you know, getting out of that conflict can (laughs) take them out of the match for a whole year. You know, you'd be almost better not to match and scramble or not to match, give yourself another year to be a more competitive candidate and re-enter the match in the following year. So don't ever put any place you don't want to go. Absolutely. That, that sounds like a very good idea. Um, what do you think about this concept of a letter of intent to let programs know where, you know, where you're ranking them uh, on the yeah. list? I think it's good as long as you're really honest. You know, if you're really only going to rank that top one or two and say, hey, you are really it for me and this is why and be really honest, then I think it can be to your advantage. Program directors also talk to each other. So if you're telling 10 programs that they're it, there's a chance that you may be found out and honesty above all else is key. So I think be honest, be honest with yourself, tell that top one or two programs and otherwise no. Um, It's been interesting because I've been here for five years and I get to see this process play out among those uh, students that I get to know through the course of uh, the work here at the AMA. And I I know what a stressful time this is. Is there any other kind of uh, pieces of golden advice that you can give uh, students during this, uh, in, you know, potentially joyful and stressful time? Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, life is a journey. And um, you really want to be one with yourself and enjoy the process. Um, there is, you are becoming right now, you're becoming the professional you're going to be. And there's a lot of joy that comes in that time. Um, gosh, thinking back to my own match and the kind of growth that I experienced in those first years, both in terms of the place where I was, the position I became, the person I became, the wife and mother I became, you know, that all happened in that place. And, you know, I'm so appreciative of the folks that helped build me and helped me become who I am. So, you know, I think getting in touch with who you want to be is really important, being a little reflective during this time and really enjoying the ride. Because this is just this little window in your life. And looking back on it now is one of my favorite, favorite times in life. So if you don't enjoy it, you're going to miss the gift. I guess perspective is one of those things that that you have that others are developing. And uh, I think that's really good advice uh, as they undertake what is a very stressful period. Uh, Dr. Christman, thanks so much for coming uh, on our show and 
uh, sharing your perspective. Uh, it's, uh, it's been really useful and I hope the folks out there find that, uh, that it helps them. And for more resources uh, about uh, this kind of uh, journey toward residency, you can check out the AMA. We've got a lot of uh, stuff on the site uh, including our Frida, uh, so, uh, which helps folks evaluate different residency programs, uh, a road to residency video series, uh, and there's a lot of information about ranking, uh, match week, and SOAP. So check out ama-assn.org uh, for all of those resources. And good luck to all of you who are going through this year's match. We're gonna be back soon with another Moving Medicine video and podcast shortly. In the meantime, don't miss one of these incredible episodes. Make sure to hit subscribe on AMA's YouTube channel and check out all our videos and podcasts at ama-assn.org slash podcasts. Thanks for joining us. Please take care. This has been Moving Medicine a podcast by the American Medical Association. Subscribe to other great AMA podcasts available wherever you listen to yours or visit ama-assn.org slash podcasts. I'm Todd Unger, and this is Moving Medicine.